Welcome to the Old Time Radio Westerns. I'm your host, Andrew Rines, and I'm excited to bring you another episode absolutely free. This episode is one of many released every month, totaling over 80 episodes so far. Each one is meticulously digitally restored and stored in the cloud for your convenience, a process that incurs costs. To help cover these expenses, you might hear some advertisements throughout the episode. While we do retain the original commercials for historical authenticity, you may also encounter modern ads, which help keep the lights on. If you prefer an ad-free experience, we offer a couple options. You can listen to the episodes on YouTube, where they don't include the audio ads, although YouTube may provide their own ads on their platform. Alternatively, you can also support us by becoming a patron on our Patreon page. For more information, go to otrwesterns.com slash donate. Again, otrwesterns.com slash donate. I do want to emphasize that we are committed to providing this content to you for free, but also we have to be transparent about the financial realities to bringing this to you. To those of you who are already supporting us, we extend our heartfelt thanks. Your contributions make it possible for us to continue doing what we love. And as a final note, I did want to mention one last thing. If you are paying for a service, let's say like Audible, and you're listening to this show on that site, they do not provide any financial or monetary means to this podcast. We provide it to them as a way for you to be able to listen, but they don't help us in any way. So again, thank you to everybody who's already supporting. And those of you who want to support us in the future, I deeply appreciate it. Now let's get into this episode. This episode is going to be the Lone Ranger. Original air date is May 2nd, 1947. And the title is A Call for Colonel Miles. Hope you enjoy. fiery horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty high old silver, the Lone Ranger. With his faithful Indian companion, Tonto, the daring and resourceful masked rider of the plains led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. Nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of a great horse, Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come, Silver! Let's go, we go! I am Silver! It was a summer day in 1880. The Lone Ranger and Tonto, dust-covered and gaunt after weeks of hard riding, 
eased their horses along the last stretch of the trail leading to Fort Keogh, Montana. Over the crest of a hill, a detachment of soldiers was demonstrating a Gatling gun. The masked man and his Indian companion raced over the hill where a group of stolid Cheyenne Indians watched the demonstration. What's the meaning of this? Wearing a mask and you're trespassing an agency land. City, big fella. Don't let my mask bother you. It doesn't. My men have only to swivel that gun to make mincemeat out of the two of you. We heard the firing. And came galloping to the rescue of Lieutenant Jack Haynes and party. I take it that this is part of a program to cow the Indians. Right you are, mister. It was planned in Washington. Hundreds of young bucks have been jumping the reservations. They have turned against us some of the very things that were calculated to exterminate them. Well, I'll admit they're using Winchesters instead of bows and arrows. And if they could get hold of Gatling guns, they could... You scored my point for me, Lieutenant Haynes. Your mission is worse than useless. It's dangerous. These agency Indians have nothing to fight with except knives. You have only six men. Seven. Counting Plentywood Smith, the interpreter. Yes, I've heard of him. He's quite a character. A white man who grew up as the adopted son of a Sioux chief. Huh. Here he is now. Want me to speak my piece, Lieutenant? Right away. Tell him the Gatling will fire 50 bullets to a Winchester's one. I always make the medicine strong. I want to hurry this thing along. It's going to storm and we'll do it Fort Custer tonight. I don't try to ford the Yellowstone unless you're sure of the bottom. <laughs> I'm not quite green enough to do that. See. Si. Yeah. Listen, plenty of what's going to talk. I don't see la. He knows Indian oratory, all right. And he knows the Indian mind. He'll convince them that they'd better be good, even if the gun doesn't. I hope you're right. Well, I'll have to join my men. Adios. Adios. No, Cheyenne's not scared. Cheyenne's mad. Toto, I don't see Red Kettle in the crowd. No, him not there. Kimasabi, I'm going to become Mr. Dixon, horse buyer for the army. The Lone Ranger was known to Colonel Nelson A. Miles at Fort Keogh as Mr. Dixon, a buyer of horses for the Army. In this role, he was admitted to the fort on the day after the demonstration of the Gatling gun. He found Colonel Miles, the famous Indian fighter, surrounded by excited officers and guests. Ah, Mr. Dixon, you're just in time to witness a history-making event. We've installed a telephone line as far as Fort Costa. The first line to be strung this side of the Mississippi. I have been interested in Dr. Bell's invention. We should soon receive the first call ever made in a field of active military operations. It's interesting, Colonel Miles, but uh, I'm here to report on horses. Yes? The Sioux have stolen all the good range stock between here and the Canadian border. What? Dixon, if that's the situation, it's bad indeed. Yes, they're running the stock across the border and trading it for guns. You think the Sioux are plotting another uprising? There's no other answer, sir. Sitting bull, a fugitive in Canada, and rain in the face, hiding in the Badlands. I thought I had only to keep the agency Indians in line. You can't do it, sir, by shooting off a Gatling gun. I know that, Dixon. This is the army. My hands are tied. Colonel Miles. Ah, Sue. Miss Hardy, this is Mr. Dixon, a man who's been of great service to the army. Oh, how do you do, Mr. Uh, how do you do? Miss Hardy is a real daughter of the regiment. Her father was with Costa. Now, uh, what is it, my dear? Will you try to get Lieutenant Haynes when the telephone line opens? He might be at Fort Custer, you know. Of course I'll try. If he's there, you can have the line to yourself. Oh, Colonel, you're sweet. You're sweet, she says. Oh, uh, Dixon. Yes? Do you suppose the telephone ever will be used successfully by lovers? <laughs> <laughs> well, sir, I... Hello? Fort Custer? Yes, I can hear you. What? I can't believe it. Wait, I'm turning the instrument over to Captain Lacey. He'll take a full report. Here, Lacey. Yes, sir. Why are you looking at me like that, Colonel? What happened? You're a good soldier, Sue. You've heard bad news before. Tell me. Tell me. Lieutenant Haynes is missing. Missing? You got the details, Lacey? Yes, sir. Honeywood Smith reports the disappearance of Lieutenant Haynes in detail. Smith says his horse went lame after they left the tall horse agency. He dropped behind. Haynes got off the trail and went into the river before Smith could catch up with him. 
Smith found the lieutenant's hat. Fort Custer sent out a troop of cavalry and 20 Crow scouts. They found nothing. Heavy rain flooded the river and wiped out all trail signs. Oh, poor Jack. The quicksand. Oh, no. No. Will some of you ladies see her to her quarters, please? First, my father. Now, Jack. Our first telephone call, and it had to break a girl's heart. Where is Plenty Wood Smith now? Oh, yes. I forgot to put it down, but Fort Custer is sending him here. Should be along any minute. I warned Lieutenant Haynes yesterday against the treachery of the Yellowstone. Then why did he... He didn't, Colonel. The river has been used to cover the treachery of a man. Take it, Lacey. Yes, sir. This is Captain Lacey speaking for the Colonel. Yes? Uh-huh. Yes, at once. More bad news, Colonel. Now what? Red Kettle and a bunch of braves have jumped the reservation. Oh, that box has a curse on it. No, no, I didn't mean that. It is saving us a lot of time. We may yet catch Red Kettle. Major Arnold? Yes, sir. Must see a squadron. Very good. A short time later, Plenty Wood Smith stood face to face with Colonel Miles and the Lone Ranger, who still wore his disguise as Mr. Dixon. Between them, on the Colonel's desk, lay a sodden campaign hat with a gold cord of an officer around it. The lips of the white Indian were twisted into a wolfish grin. Well, you've heard my report. Now I'll mosey along. Now just uh, stay where you are, Plenty Wood. Who are you? What right have you got to order me around? I want to look at that hat, Colonel. Here it is, Dixon. Lieutenant Haynes wore it with the brim pinned up on the side. All the young officers do. He used a very ornamental pin, the kind that would catch an Indian's eye. I noticed it yesterday. Yes, and it's gone. But it wasn't lost. It was torn from the hat. The holes in the felt show it. I didn't steal it. Then one of your Indian confederates did. You didn't find that hat in the river. You picked it up after you had lured the soldiers into an ambush set by Red Kettle. Sergeant Hale, arrest that man. Hands off me, you two-bit saddle bumper. Let's get a gun. I'll fix that. You did it. You nearly broke my arm. You can't be trusted with a gun. Put him in the stockade, Sergeant. Yes, sir. All right, come on, Smith. March. Does it? Colonel, if you permitted Plentywood Smith to escape... You lead us straight to Red Kettle. I couldn't countenance such a thing, Dixon. This is the army. We're sworn to enforce and obey its regulations. Yes, of course. If anyone planned to deliver Smith from the stockade, he'd have to do it without my knowledge or the connivance of any of my men. I understand. Adios, sir. Oh, uh, Dixon? Yes, Colonel? My men have orders to shoot to kill any person who approaches the stockade. A few minutes later, the Lone Ranger joined Tonto at their camp near the fort. They discussed the situation. And Red Kettle will try to reach Rain in the face. Them two plenty good Indian general. Yes, they worked together when the Sioux and Cheyennes joined forces against Custer. Maybe Red Kettle in Badlands now. He never got that far, Tonto, before the rain stopped. Now he can't move without leaving a clear trail with the gun wheels. Ah. He has some hole in the wall where he'll stay until the cavalry gives up its search. Ah. And what we do? I have a plan, Kimosabe. <laughs> That evening, the boot and saddle bar in a nearby settlement was crowded with soldiers. As headquarters Sergeant Hale shouldered his way through the bat wing doors and the light poured out behind him, Tonto jerked loose the tie strap on a big roan that stood at the hitching rack. Hey, what are you doing, Injun? Hey, get out of that saddle. Halt there, halt! Out here, everybody, turn out! Mount up. Redskin just took a horse. He's headed west, right towards the fort. Now we can cut him off. Come on. Get up there. Get up. Get up. 
In the meantime, the Lone Ranger, still disguised as Dixon, had returned to the fort where he met Captain Lacey in front of the prison stockade. Big fellows back in Washington are going to raise the roof when they hear the Indians got away with a Gatling gun. Oh, through the day! Yeah. What is it? Oh, ho, 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 ho. Get a reservation, oh. jumper, sir. He stole a horse. Oh, it's you, Sergeant Hale. Get down off that horse, Injun. Uh, Let me uh, have a look at him. Hold up the lantern, Dixon. Here you are. What's your name, Indian? He looks like a Cheyenne called Burning Bush. Me heap friendly Indian. Friendly in Indians don't steal horses. You were going out to join Red Kettle's renegades. Uh, Search him, Sergeant. Turn around, Burning Bush. Shake out his blanket. Feel over his head. No telling where he might have a knife hidden. Uh, there's nothing on him, sir. Where's the horse? The roan, right here. Captain Lacey, that horse is mine. Yours, Dixon? Yes. One of the three I bought in town this afternoon. I left it hitched at the boot and saddle, expecting to get it tonight. Well, that's where he stole it. Are you thieving, Coyote? You're one Indian. I'm going to teach a lesson. Steal my horse, will you? Oh, here, here now. Beat you up. Oh, oh, oh. Yes. Yes. oh. Here's the gun, Toto. You killed the ah, Keep it beneath your blanket. Oh, uh-huh. Let him go on. The rest can deserve it. You'll find horses at the rail outside the fort. Nick, have it. Stop it, Dixon, or I'll arrest you. That Indian's a federal prisoner. All right, Captain. He's your property. Take him. I know how you feel about horse stealing. But Uncle Sam doesn't stand for a man taking the law into his own hands. What'll I do with the Indian, sir? Put him in the stockade. Corporal, open it up. Right, Sergeant. Come on, Injun, get up. Uh-huh. In you go. Well, I tossed burning bush in with plenty wood. <laughs> that ought to start another Chicago fire. <laughs> <laughs> The curtain falls on the first act of our Lone Ranger story. Before the next exciting scenes, please permit us to pause for just a few moments. continue our story. As part of his plan to solve the mystery of the missing Gatling gun and its crew, the Lone Ranger had contrived to have Tonto imprisoned in the stockade at Fort Keogh. The Indian now shared a section of the wire enclosure with the white renegade, Plenty Wood Smith. The prisoners studied each other. So your name is Bernard Bush. You're a Cheyenne. Oh, how you know me. I'm not deaf. That uh, horse bar must have given you a gosh awful oh, lick. And me meet him again. Me, me get out plenty soon. Me got gun. What? Oh, you get ready now, plenty wood. Me start groaning. Go ahead. Oh, oh. Hey, God, oh. come quick. Oh, what's the fuss about? The Indian's oh. dying. Breaking the horse bar, cracking oh. still. You gonna let him die like this? I would if it was up to me. Oh. Horse for the guard. Oh. Looks like the engine oh. burning bush got hit too hard. Uh, he must be senseless or wouldn't be making so much noise. Oh. What are we supposed to do? Oh. Well, it's a general order that oh. we've got to protect government property. Oh. Yes, the government owns the engine. Well, oh. then we better take a look at him. Yeah, you take the lantern. Oh. Plenty wood, get back from the fence. Oh. 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 Hey, burning bush. Get up. He's getting up. Watch out, he's got a gun. You soldiers, put up hands and keep mouth shut. Get him, get, get him up. up. Come on, get him up. 
mounted on the horses which the Lone Ranger had made easily available, Tonto and Plentywood Smith raced away from Fort Keogh into the moonlit night. I'll take the lead. Me keep look out behind. The Lone Ranger watched the start of their flight from behind the black mask which he again had donned. As the sound of the drumming hoofs grew faint, he urged his mighty stallion into pursuit. The trail led to the rain-swollen Yellowstone, then followed its banks into broken country. The moon faded into a graying sky... And then the Lone Ranger swung low from his saddle to snatch an eagle feather from the ground. Oh, Silver, poor big fellow. Oh, steady now. Yes, it's, it's Toto's feather. The sign at Red Kettle's hideout is close. Here's where we wait. The masked man led his horse behind a boulder and examined his guns. Soon Tonto slipped noiselessly out of a scrub pine nearby and squatted at his side. Good work, Toto. Where are they? Just ahead in cave, the river. What have they done with the gun and soldiers? Me see gun. Six soldier, all alive. Only six. Lieutenant Haynes gone. Some of Red Kettle's brave take him to Rain Face. Rain in the face must want him as a hostage. His son's a prisoner. Me see Red Kettle. But him not see me. Me not able to fool him. Me get away fast. Leave horse. What did Plentywood tell them? Well, him say throw gun in river. Kill prisoners. Then scatter and go where rain and face hide. All right, come on. Uh, I'll lead Silver up as far as possible. Uh, you, uh, you've got rifle? Two. Take one. You see cave from behind the next big rock. Easy, Silver. Look, Kimasabi. And he would got Gatlin gun out of cave. I don't think he can handle it. I'm serious now. Keep the cave entrance under fire. I'm riding in. Steady, big fella. One, Silver! white Indian and the Cheyenne Braves, who had been helping him pull the gun, fled into the cave as the Lone Ranger charged down upon them, his guns driving rivets of orange fire into the dawn night. Come, Silver! Stop, you renegade! Stop! As Silver bore down on the deserted Gatling, the masked man kicked his boots free from the stirrups, leaped and lit standing astride the gun limber. He swung the barrel, threw in the discharge lever, and jerked the crank. Multiple barrels spun with a speed that made them a single cylinder. The frightful storm of lead swept across the mouth of the cave, sealing it up and filling the air with dust and flying fragments of rock. Then Tonto ran down to join his friend. Call the Red Kettle in Cheyenne, Tonto. Tell him to come out with his warriors. Uh-huh. Say that if they as much as touch their prisoners, all will die. Uh-huh. Come on, see. Mausu. Make. Come on, the forest. The man of the what does he say? Red Kettle say all come out. Him heap sorry, him not get away with big gun. Hear that? Uh-huh. Pony soldiers come. Major Arnold's column must have heard the shooting. Now what we do now, Kimasabi? Look for Lieutenant Haynes? Not now, Toto. Even if we could rescue him, that wouldn't prevent another uprising. That's right. Get Red Kettle and leave the others to the soldiers. I want the chief for an experiment. The masked man rode into Fort Keogh alone. Before a gaping sentry could find words to challenge him, he reached headquarters and dismounted. A young West Pointer rose to bar his way to Colonel Miles' office, then fell back as Miles spoke. Step forward, masked man. I want to congratulate you. What happened at Red Kettle's cave wasn't important, Colonel. I should ask uh, how you happened to find the place, but I won't. <laughs> Call it coincidence. By another strange coincidence... A horse buyer named Dixon suggested that the renegade's hideout could be found by contriving the escape of Plentywood Smith. He did escape, Colonel. Fortunately, Mr. Dixon has, uh, shall we say, disappeared. May I ask why it's fortunate? Well, sir, if he turned up again, I'd be compelled to question him severely about the manner in which that Indian horse thief obtained a gun. Yes, I understand, Colonel. Now may I ask a favor? It's already granted. I want to use your telephone experimentally. There's the box. Try it. I want to try its effect on Red Kettle. Red Kettle? I thought he got away. I'm holding him. This is high-handed, sir. 
I don't want to be tied up with the kind of regulations that made it necessary for Dixon to disappear. Masked man, I warn Colonel, you. Colonel, the Army's attempt to overawe the Indians by showing off that Gatling gun was a failure. I propose to influence the Red Man with a telephone. Well... Red Kettle's brother, Little Fox, is a prisoner at Fort Custer. I know. Red Kettle knows it, too. Let them hold a telephone conversation. Arrangements were soon made for the trial of the telephone as an instrument of bloodless warfare. The Lone Ranger signaled from a window of the colonel's office and Tonto brought in the captive Red Kettle. The old chief, a veteran of the Battle of Little Bighorn, faced Colonel Miles and the masked man with expressionless face and steady eyes. Chief Red Kettle, you are skilled in the art of war. But from this day forward, the powers of nature will fight for the great white father. Men, horses, and guns alone will not win battles. Because words will fly like bullets through the air. Red Kettle, not afraid of words. Only guns kill Indians. The great chief has seen the white man's gun in many barrels. Now he has said to himself, what the white man has, I can stop him from using or use against him. Man who covers face speaks truth. The great chief knows that Long Hair had such guns at Little Bighorn, but couldn't use them. Let him tell how the Indians kept General Custer from getting help. Indians make heap big noise, so no one hear bugles. Make plenty smoke, so no one see sun signals. No longer will such tricks win battles. The soldiers of the great white father can now make their voices heard over the highest mountains and across big waters. Uh-huh. Look at the box on the wall, great chief. Mm -hmm. Through it, you can speak to your brother, Little Fox, who is far away. It's time for the call. Oh, uh, here, Chief Red Kettle. Put this against your ear and speak into the horn. Call Little Fox by name. Little Fox, Chibunga Kigit. What's he saying, Toto? Him know a brother's voice. Oh, no. Now he must question. Only Little Fox has answered to him. There's a storm coming. It may break the connection. Me, me here, Little Fox. What medicine you use make box talk? Electricity. Uh, me not understand electricity. Chief Red Kettle, electricity is, um, uh, mask man. How can I explain to an Indian something I don't understand myself? Well, I... Uh, great chief, the white man has borrowed lightning from the great spirit to carry his words. Lightning makes thunder. Me hear only whisper in box. Look! Sparks fly from box like fire from gun. Yes, the great spirit has spoken. Ah, me believe. Red kettle fight no more. Great chief... You are wise. Ah. A year ago, the government promised a full pardon to Rain in the Face if he would surrender, turn in his arms, and release his prisoners. Does the promise still stand, Colonel Miles? Of course it does. You can go now, Chief Red Kettle. What? See the Wait. chief out of the fort, Toto. Uh, misabe, Kimasabe. Colonel, Red Kettle will tell what he heard and saw today. Mm -hmm. Well, perhaps you're right. Maybe he'll persuade the Sioux chiefs to give up. We'll soon know. Tonto will trail him and report back. One week dragged into another without word from Tonto. Crow scouts told of seeing smoke signals and hearing drums deep in the badlands, but the meaning of the messages remained a secret of the forbidding hills. Each day sharpened the anxiety felt by Colonel Miles and Sue Hardy. The Lone Ranger tried to reassure them, but he too felt the strain of waiting for the outcome of his plan. And then... Colonel Miles, the telephone. I, I'm almost afraid to hear what it will tell. This is Colonel Miles. Yes, Fort Custer, I can hear you. Go ahead. Great guns, are you sure? Yes, yes, call back. Sue, Jack Haynes is safe. Oh, Jack. Colonel... Did they harm him? Not at all. He just reached Fort Custer with an Indian named Tonto. The telephone saved him. And let you win again, masked man. Rain in the face and all his people are on their way here to surrender. The masked man? 
He's gone, Colonel. Yes, so he'll return if we ever need him. But who was he? And who was Mr. Dixon? They're one and the same. The Lone Ranger. you have just heard is a copyrighted feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated. This has been a presentation of otrwesterns.com and we hope you enjoyed please take some time to like and rate our shows in your favorite podcast application. Follow us on Facebook by going to otrwesterns.com slash Facebook. Subscribe to our YouTube channel by going to otrwesterns.com slash YouTube. And send us an email, podcast at otrwesterns.com. You can call and leave us a voicemail, 707-986-8739. This episode is copyright under the attribution non-commercial share like copyright. For more information, go to otrwesterns.com slash copyright. Have a great day, and thanks for listening.